The short game is listener supported on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show and join us on our Discord, head to theshortgame.net or patreon.com slash the short game. Welcome back to The Short Game, a show usually about short games, games that respect your time. My name is Nate Heininger, and I am joined this week by one co-host, Shane Kelly. And this week, for a number of reasons, we are discussing Tears of the Kingdom. You may have heard of it. It is a little game released by Nintendo on May 12th of 2023 Mm -hmm. for the Switch console. I little indie title you know we thought there isn't enough coverage of this game that's not what we're usually covering but we're allowed <laughs> we're allowed to do this once in a while you'll note that our primary host uh reagan is not here and that's because mm-hmm. he cannot be uh in he cannot be asked to play anything that takes more than uh a <laughs> fortnight to complete so yeah. uh so sorry Especially not to you listeners. <laughs> yeah Well, yeah, so I think in true short game fashion, you know, we're we're a game of, we're a show about fitting games into your life. And uh, we play a lot of small games, but I think usually underneath, sometimes, you know, we're all kind of picking away at at some larger games. When there's something big like this, we always do, yeah. Uh, We've gotten far enough into the game that we feel like we can talk about it. Uh, And, you know, we're only a month and a half past everybody else's coverage of it, which I think is pretty representative of how we tackle these massive games. Oh, yeah. it's And th- this game has everything that our podcast um, is on record standing against, which is uh, a large <laughs> open world, um, tons of collectibles, um, just a... Uh, it's a it's a big name title from a major developer. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, interesting, but... Uh, For me personally, the reason that I really wanted to cover it is just because it's already eating up all of my gaming time and I don't have (laughs) much else to talk about. Uh, And it's because um, I I just can't stop playing it. It's a really, really enthralling, really incredible game. Um, And my experience with the original or I guess previous uh game in the zelda not the original game in the zelda series but breath of the wild sure um was kind of more in line with how we typically play games for the show where we're a little bit always ready to move on to the next thing um in breath of the wild i messed around for i don't know i don't know how long but not that long because i only beat two of the major like divine beast dungeon things Mm -hmm. Before I was like, um, Ganon, let's let's go. And I just charged to Ganon and and fought him. And there was the end of it. Right. Uh, this game, I'm really I don't I'm not experiencing it like that. I'm not trying to, like, push my way through yeah. the the experience is incredible. And it's really lines up with a lot of the things that I actually do really like in gaming. I don't know. What about you? What, what's got you uh, glued to this one? <laughs> yeah. So I I had a kind of a similar take on breath of the wild although it's funny i actually i consider that game one of my favorite games of all time however i didn't actually beat it i kind of burned i i i I did all the divine beasts and just sort of like burn myself out just exploring the world and going after shrines Mm -hmm. and things like that and and we have been doing this show for so long that uh i think we were four years into this show when breath of the wild came out too so like you said you know we're constantly moving on to the next thing and at some point i just felt comfortable putting down breath of the wild even though i didn't technically complete it but i i played it enough for for me um and I'd say the the last month, if, if you noticed, I've not been on the show as much. It's been a it's been a weird uh, a month for me with with what I've been able to spend my time on. But the one thing that I have been able to uh, to commit and sort of pick away at has been Bre- uh, Tears of the Kingdom, and I agree completely. I have definitely found this game to be far more enthralling than the last one even though i absolutely mm-hmm. loved breath of the wild uh and while this game is staggeringly large i do th- and and as you said pretty counter to 
basically everything that we typically preach on this show. That said, I still think that this is a game that respects your time. It just you have to have a lot of time to yep. have played it. So I <laughs> like I don't know if this makes sense. So I, I yeah. spent like several hours one night playing this game committed just solely to doing some bullshit. I was trying to build a boat like to get across this thing and I wanted to like custom build this boat and I wanted to make it fun and go fast. And I spent probably more time on this little stupid thing that I had created in my head that I wanted to do than I have spent on some of my favorite games that we've ever covered on this show. <laughs> I think I spent like a gone homes worth amount no. of time. <laughs> you, just, it just, this turned into you must build a boat. Yeah, right. Of just doing something stupid that really had nothing to do with like driving the game forward. But that was entirely my choice. Like I didn't have to do yeah. that. Right. And I had a great time doing it, even though when it was all said and done, I was like, what the fuck did I just spend all of my, my entire evening doing? But I had a I had a really nice time. And I think a lot of times when we look at these bigger games or when we're playing these bigger games, some of the stuff that drives us crazy is is the like repetitive nature of what you're forced to do and yeah. the repetitive nature of side quest and and all of that it just feels like mm -hmm. bloated whereas this game you really you know what you're doing may not necessarily be particularly exciting but it's all by your choice this is a game that is really full of excitement i, I i'm going to speak kind of to the audience that has I think most people at this point are very well aware of Breath of the Wild. It was one of the most popular games of all time. Um, honestly, if I'm being real with you guys, the reason that I actually dropped it is that I had a kid and I kind of dropped <laughs> everything in my life. It, that, that came out in like um, like uh, 2017 uh, and like 2017 in the summer. That was that was when that happened. So, um, but the this game, the um, the thing that it gives you is, first off, very, very much all the same stuff that you got in The Legend of Zelda uh, Breath of the Wild. Um, the world is practically unchanged, which was an interesting choice. Basically, like, you know, the, the whole of Hyrule has like, there's a lot of little changes that stand out i really like the decision that they made i really like most it, of it really really the same because everybody was giving it shit but i was like um, i, I think it's really compelling and i think it's a it's a good argument for like yeah let uh, your developers focus on fun and interesting yeah. mechanics and dynamics and well, like let's let's start with yeah. diving into like the world of the game because yeah. the places the ways that it is different um are really interesting to me so they they start off in the advertising um they tell you hey you're gonna be on sky islands right it says explore the land of hyrule and the skies above right mm -hmm. um and that's where you start off the alternative to the you know great plateau is this great sky island um where you learn all of the tools that you're going to be using i'll talk more about those but um the the biggest addition really is pretty much unmentioned in yeah. the marketing, which I, I love. And it's the depths because we go from having the surface world of Hyrule to having the skies, the surface and this enormous underworld, which I, I personally predict that um, in a few years, the depths is going to be the most influential element to like future open world games from this mm. game. Um, there are a lot of things this game does well and the depths isn't even my favorite aspect of this game, but what they do with the depths is you basically take the surface of Hyrule and take all of the high points and make them low, make all the low points high, uh, make it like it, it are aesthetically. It has this weird, like Nausicaa Valley of the wind look to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and they, um, fill it with bandits yeah, and they feel it was slightly more dangerous, like tweaked enemies and lots of really good, valuable resources so that you do want to go down there. And for everything that's in the surface world, they put in some 
tweaked version of it down below, like where you have the shrines on the surface, you have light roots to light up the depths. Uh, the fact that it is pitch black makes the exploration super cool and exciting. Um, and terrifying. And, yeah. And uh, I, w- I was playing in the depths last night and Molly had gone to bed and I was like in a really spooky part. I had not spent a ton of time in the depths and she was like trying to we have a bunch of those hue lights around uh, our house, you uh-huh. know, and she was trying to set something up with it and inadvertently like rapidly turned off on and off all the lights mm. in the room that I was playing <laughs> in the depths. And that's fine. I was like legitimately for a moment, like extra spooked because I was already a little bit on edge exploring yeah. around in the depths. The uh, the enemies that they put down there, not only is it the like tweaked versions of the monsters, but um, in the first game, you knock the leader of the Yiga clan into a big hole in the ground. And turns out he's just been down there <laughs> <laughs> building an army of, of all kinds of stuff. Anyway, uh, yeah. so the depths I absolutely love. Um, uh, the 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 world of the game is um, like the same but different. The Sky Islands and the depths are both places that are full of like really good resources. And these are games where there's a lot of crafting, like the cooking system from the original game comes back. Basically, they brought back everything from the original game. Yeah. But I I, I am a sucker for... Cra- I think I may be the only person on the podcast that is a sucker for games with lots of crafting. I don't know if that's you or not. Yeah. Yes and no. So I like it in theory, but I rarely find myself interacting with these systems. So like, for example... I was super stoked about Fallout 4 and the crafting system that was mm-hmm. coming out in Fallout 4, specifically the base building. I got that just seemed like the perfect addition to Fallout 4. And then I kind of played with it but ultimately got pretty bored with it and completely Yeah, well that system kind of sucked anyway. <laughs> well, that's fair. I you know, maybe not the best example because it's a bad system, but like you know, I I always want to like it, but I never dive into them very deeply Mm -hmm. uh this game however i i love i do really enjoy the resource gathering and and uh um cooking system i think Mm -hmm. it's there's something just fun and satisfying yeah they make it it easy enough and delightful enough Um, yeah and and it's um like it's a little expanded from what it was before and there's a lot of um uh it's also like like a lot of the elements of this game um it's kind of a little bit optional like you can pretty much just eat whatever you find lying around um but you can get cool status yeah buffs and things like I that think the game is just I, I think it's actually an interesting balance because i at least for me personally and this is absolutely a your mileage may vary mm-hmm. sort of thing but like for me i think that the combat is just challenging enough across Mm -hmm. the full expanse of the game that I feel like it's worthwhile to, yeah, to craft these meals that stat buff me for whatever it is that I'm going to be doing. So I enjoy Mm -hmm. trying to gather attack stat stuff or uh, defense up stuff or, or I just get hit enough that I need to have a, a, like a good reserve of heart restoring food because I'm not, I'm not good enough at this game at the combat to like do a, like a clean sheet on these things. I I totally agree. Like every time I get punched in this game, I immediately go into the menu and eat a 12 course meal. Um, (laughs) Yeah. My Zelda, uh, a good thing you do a lot of running in this game because, uh, my, my link, I'm, I'm so sorry. My link is, uh, we're just sure. cramming these omelets and uh-huh. uh, and these wild rice bowls, and mm-hmm. I, I love to like, I love to think about the like you know RP elements of like stopping mid fight to eat like three full meals mm-hmm. before you you swing yeah. your sword again, <laughs> and that that is that is where this lines up with. Um, there's a another series where you'll frequently eat massive amounts of food uh in the middle of fights and that's the elder scrolls series um (laughs) yeah i i really am starting to see some interesting 
similarities between this and the Elder Scrolls and maybe even pushing into um, games that I have always really loved, um, like like the Dishonored series or Prey. Yeah. yeah. And I, I've not played Prey, but I do love the Dishonored games. Yeah. Um, so in in those games they're really characterized by giving you um, an enormous amount of freedom in terms of how you approach things. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. That's the kind of immersive sim style. I wouldn't say the elder scrolls is exactly an immersive sim, but it has some of the elements like a, a consistent world um, and open-ended puzzle and quest solving where you can approach things in lots of different ways. Um, Yeah. I think with like an elder scrolls, you're the way they allow you to approach things differently is your character creation, right? Mm-hmm. Like you might a- approach this as a wizard or you might approach this as a bruiser. And, you know, mm-hmm. but that said, it, you, it usually is like you, you have to kill this guy and whether you're going to kill him with wizard spells or with, uh, with, you know, your sword or whatever, like the end result is typically the same, but mm-hmm. the way you go about it can be wildly different totally. depending on how you totally. build your character. But Breath of the in Wild. Games and, like uh, Dishonored, like that yeah. gets turned up to 11. You know, your every encounter probably has multiple ways you can approach it. Fight, sneak, use yeah. some weird combination of different abilities. Um, you know, there's there's a classic thing in Dishonored where you can like, you know, grab an enemy and throw them at another enemy to block yeah. their shot and take over their body and stop time and teleport all these different ways to get through your, your different um, challenges, player freedom like that. And the ability to approach things in lots of different ways is a really key aspect for lots of different modern games, especially open world games. And I would say breath of the wild really gave players an incredible amount of freedom, particularly with its like, physics system but even other like overlapping systems like its weather patterns like the survival stuff um Mm -hmm. and that is what made breath of the wild really interesting for a lot of speed runners you'll see clips online of the speed run approaches for breath of the wild where it's like you know you you the timer starts and you immediately knock down a tree and then turn it into some sort of physics catapult that um, <laughs> fires you like yeah. a ray gun bolt through the heart of Ganon, right? So, um, but Tears of the Kingdom really, really doubles down on that. Um, and I, I let's kind of talk for a second about these new abilities that Link has. Um, the abilities that you get um, are first off a ability called Ultra Hand, which basically lets you pick up, move and attach any of the random physics object junk uh, that populates Hyrule, right? Yeah, which I, you know, when the when the um, the trailers and teasers and whatnot were coming out, like this mm-hmm. is this is the you know the big feature. Now it's expanded on significantly with the different Zonai devices, but mm-hmm. ultimately, like this is the bread and butter of of like what makes this game so different and new. Uh, and when all the trailers were coming out, honestly, I was a little worried about it because I'm like, this looks like it's going to be the clunkiest I know. piece of shit thing. Like, I don't want to have to like, I it's don't so want to have to that you say that because like the, the, um, ascend ability in the very first trailer that they showed the uh, only ability i think you saw was link flying up through a platform using the ascend ability and i was like what the hell is that (laughs) (laughs) you like like crawling swimming through oh it's a nightmare for if you if you have any sort of like claustrophobia or any sort of like uh just the way he like and like then like (laughs) swims through the rocks and it Uh seems like it's a little difficult to get in and out like i don't know it sounds horrible but the uh the point i was gonna say though is that like ultra hand you know in classic good nintendo fashion when where nintendo gets it right they it's it's about as polished as a goofy system like this can be and generally speaking it's 
pretty smooth on like if you know what you want to do you can do it with a mm-hmm. relative degree of of smoothness like th- there's definitely some clunkiness don't get me wrong and i want to talk about the controls later but like it, it's it, for what you're doing the ability to like, yeah. pick up just about anything and attach it to something else and then have it stay attached and respond with its own physics going forward it's pretty incredible and yeah. and 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 that is where you're talking about player choice too where like one of the things i love about this game is you know when we were saying like in an elder scrolls you may talk to your friend and be like oh well i fought that dragon as a wizard so i use these spells it was awesome like oh i fought it as an archer i use these things it was awesome da, da, da. and this it's like how did you get to the other side of that river and you know me i spent a stupid amount of time building a stupid little boat that like barely worked and took forever and then someone I else swam was like, and ate three, yeah almost <laughs> halfway across yeah or like oh you didn't like you built i built a bridge up by chopping down yeah. like 30 trees in the area and it's like just completely different uh solutions to a problem uh, and, and in the shrines, too, where you have to, you know, they set you up to build these things. Molly and I have been playing like separately, but we at a similar pace. And so I'll watch her go into a puzzle and like her. The thing she's building is just like a completely different yeah. than how I built it. And I, it's it's really interesting for something that is as beginner friendly as it is. It It really has some hands-on complicated gameplay uh, in that, that building element, like, because it's not just like sticking stuff together. Really. Um, you unlock this whole auto build ability and there's a big focus on, um, most crafting games are focused on base building and that's not what this is. This is really focused on vehicle building, which is awesome. Um, Yeah. Or or like temporary solution building, but yeah, vehicles are, are the, are the main thing. Mm-hmm. And the, the, including the planes, involved, which is mm-hmm. fucking crazy, which is you amazing. Build planes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I love it. <laughs> um, you know, the 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 thing about uh, the sort of sandbox experience that you have with these puzzles is like it does give you lots of different ways to approach it. I I have I have seen I, I really like when you have that moment where you're faced with a puzzle and there's an obvious but kind of, you know, onerous solution you know that's okay i'm gonna have to chop down some trees and then stick them together and uh make something that slides down this way or whatever um well i'll give you an example there's a there's a shrine um that was all about like building something that would kind of move along these rails through the air um Mm -hmm. well instead of moving the rails around and building something that will slide on the rails um i just strapped a uh, rocket to my shield and like shield surfed along the rails <laughs> and that works just fine. You know, like there are nice. lots of different things you can yeah. do. Um, the, the finding a shortcut through the puzzles is just as satisfying as solving them. If not more. Um, I, I think let's talk a second about Zonai devices. Cause that rocket is one of them. They're really my favorite addition to the game. Um, and they're a big part of the vehicle building and everything. Um, Mm -hmm. you get access to, uh, primarily at the, at first, um, from the sky islands, these big gachapon machines (laughs) that are like a big gumball machine that spits out. I love that they did that. You get to sell them. It's like, you know, I'm sure in development they were like, all right, how do we make sure the player has access to these tools, these devices that we want them to have? And there's probably some like discussion around like narrative inclusion and like treasure chest development and and like you know monsters dropping them and whatnot which they kind of do but ultimately they just land on no let's do a gigantic like cartoon gumball machine that you drop a a pretty uh easy to find resource into and it it Mm -hmm. like link even goes like yay you know like a little like a little <laughs> woo like so a little, good. like a little jump and punch in the air when all of the little gumballs come rolling out it's so Super. funny it's like it's 
it's such a good choice though it's like i don't want to i don't want to have to like dig around for these things i just want to have them and and it's like a good I think example especially of in a zone Nintendo i stuff, just saying do something fun you know they really prioritize stuff that would be instantly recognizable especially for kids and like yeah. they, that that works there so these these objects i don't know how many there are there's a lot of different there's variations a lot. yeah um and some of them are things like a fan um, emitters for different elements like fire, ice. Uh, there's wheels of different kinds. There's wings. There's all sorts of different things that you can stick together um, to make your different devices. And you can even do things like um, there's like carts that will automatically roll towards enemies or heads for your constructs that will automatically look to face enemies. And with a combination of different things you can make really complex gadgets um there's almost nothing that is more satisfying than building a murder robot and sending it rolling towards a bunch of bokoblins <laughs> super fun hilarious I, i'm sure you've seen there's that subreddit hyrule engineering where i did you yeah. know people are are posting their their best things and, and like people are making yeah, like like ship like airplanes with like sub drop ships that they and and drones that they're able to fire off and release that are firing rockets uh, all of this in a zelda game it's absurd yeah. it's crazy it, the complexity is uh is really incredible when you see it but also the simplicity of some of the basic things like one of the first things that you want to do when you have access to the Zonai devices, and then especially the auto build ability, is just make yourself a really good do it all flying vehicle. Um, I I saw someone else's design for a easy hover bike, and I have been using the hell out of it. Um, nice. Everywhere I go, I you know it, it's it really gives you a huge amount of freedom uh, to be able to fly around. Um, and all of these systems are kind of interacting and, and interlocking. You need to have this resource zonite that you can only get in the depths. Uh, you need to, you know, so there's lots of different um, overlapping systems, which to me is is the 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 key to what makes this feel like a uh, immersive sim. Is that there's all of this freedom. You can approach things in so many different ways. Uh, fly over the Bokoblin camp. Jump out of your hover bike. Um, fire bomb flowers down at them, um, freeze them, uh, electrocute them. <laughs> um, and, and all of that is, you know, and interacting with all these other overlapping systems like the weather, um, and the different gear Attach a Korok get. to a rocket and fire it into the mm -hmm. sun. Yeah. yeah. We haven't even talked about my favorite, uh, um, ability in the game, which is none of the ones we've discussed so far. It's the, it's the rewind ability yeah um that one is so basically if something has moved in the game you hit rewind on it and it's going to retrace its steps back like if you pick up a rock and walk across the field and then hit rewind it'll hop up and then sort of shuffle back uh in the exact same path that you that you used and there are so many fun and interesting ways to use that ability um like there's um I, I don't remember exactly when this happened, but the sky islands are kind of breaking apart and you see these rocks falling. And then at a certain point uh, you realize, Oh, I can just climb on that rock and hit rewind. And the rock goes all the way back up to the sky Island that it fell off of. And that's, I mean, that's not creativity, but it's not, it's not spelled out for you that you should do this. Mm -hmm. um, the airplanes and vehicles and all of that stuff using rewind on those is often really useful. Um, it's used very effectively in lots of puzzles. It's really a fun ability to have. Yeah, they, that is one that I think they have done some good work with as far mm -hmm. as like classic Zelda puzzles. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like the, the puzzles in this game are just like breath of the wild. They're like reduced down to these shrines and then the temples kind of have a little bit of them um which i want to talk about the temples in a minute but the ability to like rewind something I, I always forget about it too i don't know why even though i agree with you it's fantastic i'll beat my head against a puzzle for mm -hmm. 10 minutes and be like oh 
damn it, I just need to rewind that bubble and then I can fly, I can ride in that bubble and yeah. it'll take me where I want to go. Uh, One of the things that I love the most good. is combining it with the ultra hand. Like you're trying yeah. to get to some hard to reach place and you can pick something up, like lift it way up high over to where you want to go and then drop it and then just ultra stand on top of it before, before rewinding it to use it to, to get to reach high places. Yeah. Stuff like that is super satisfying when you find the right moments for it. Yeah. I mean, it's truly incredible that the, the Zelda has essentially just become a physics game. It makes mm-hmm. me wonder for the future of the franchise, because like I, I really liked what they did with this game. As far as reusing the world, there's some continuity in the story and there's some continuity in the Weird. world. Weird omissions from continuity in the story. Yeah, well, too, the story I want to talk. There are some things that I think are are not great about this game. And the story and for Zelda has never been strong. No, so. it's never been good. But this one is particularly uh, annoying. But anyway, um, the uh, I, I really liked the continuity of the world and what it allowed them to do with the expansion of mechanics and the expansion of like the polish of the game. Uh, but I do wonder, like, is this just Zelda going forward or is it now Zelda is a physics crafting game or are we going to see a return to, uh, you know, the previous attempts of the more linear uh, uh, 3D Zeldas? Like, it, it, I think we do. I yeah, think this I, is kind of a high watermark for uh this version of, of zelda i, I think so I don't too think they will abandon the classic like st- structure the, the the classic st- structure for zelda is a lot more linear adventure based and that's still a super satisfying great kind of game yeah people would hate giving that up uh but this is this is so different and fresh it's um it's very very unique well, it was pretty lofty i i think a uh, most like at least myself and I feel like a lot of people felt like there's no real way they could make something better than breath of the wild in that format. Uh, and then surprise, surprise only took six years of development and again, reusing a ton of the same assets, but they did. I think that this is a better game than, than breath of the wild. Um, but I will now say it again, feeling even more confident that like, I don't think they could or that the right move is to basically try to make like Breath of the Wild 3. I, I'm what this really feels like to me in that line is they they saw the speedrun community doing all this weird stuff with things like the magnesis ability um and the I forget the stasis ability yeah. and they even you know you could even maybe see a little bit of the like weird modding stuff that first game had a really good physics engine, like much better than it even seemed like it needed in order right. to get by. And then they spent like those six years, the tools that they've given us for manipulating the world in this version of the game are a feel a lot like them trying to create the easy handholdy versions of dev tools to hand mm. to like, in particular, I remember hearing a story about the ascend ability and that the ascend ability was the uh, was a an ability that they had that they had put in for like when you were bug testing the game or something like that. Um, And it was just really easy to just, you know, you're in a cave or whatever. You hit a button and boom, you just go up through the roof and you're out. Right. So uh, the ascend ability was one example that is a direct line from like dev tools to the gameplay elements but being able to pick up and move and manipulate all of these objects in every dimension um with a great deal of like um like control uh, that feels a little bit like a dev tool as well and i just feels like they wanted to go all out giving you as much control as they could over this game and, and, and the world just to see how far people could push it, which I mean, it's Clearly. a very cool direction, but I yeah. don't see how you could go all the way with that. I don't see how you could go a lot farther in that direction. Um, you could come up with a bunch of new dungeons and, and things like that, but the, how do you make 
tools that give you more control over the world than being able to like pick up almost everything. Yeah, I, I imagine that uh, there's hardware limitations as well. You know, yeah. like the, uh, I, I think there's certainly more that they could do, but probably not with the Nintendo Switch. Right. You know, that's a good point. And, and then also with, uh, you know, you're talking about like Breath of the Wild, you know, that was 2017. We were all so amazed at stuff that has now become even you know somewhat ubiquitous in gaming. Like I remember being truly like floored that I was fighting a Bokoblin. I knocked the sword out of its hand and it went and picked up like a floorboard from a thing that, I, you know, from from its little shack or whatever and started fighting yeah. me with that. You know, it is like that that interactivity with the world felt so new and then yeah now they're like well you're used to that so what if Mm -hmm. now you as the player can basically control everything but it is still it's still kind of limited you can't do any everything i i I totally agree with you on like the ai of the enemies in the original game being a huge part of the appeal like they they really managed to come up with um really interactive and uh, enemies and there was a lot of stuff like you know status effects and things like that that you know that's all that's another highlight of immersive sims is having kind of predictable but also really interesting and capable uh ai for your enemies so that you support the different kinds of gameplay like stealth and whatever um this game really doubles down on that aspect too first off there's a lot more enemy variety there are um the first game had like i don't know a bunch of different colors of Bokoblin. <laughs> um, this game has like, they come in lots of different sizes. Um, the, it is still it, mostly like, Bokoblins and, yeah. and, and, and Moblins and Lasalva. They've, they've added a lot. They've added, they've added several. Um, so the, uh, the big famous enemy from the first one was the, uh, the Lionel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That was like the hardest enemy in the game they're still here, but they've added a lot more of these like boss class enemies um, and really cool interactions. Like I really love there's a, there was the Talus, which is a big stone guy. Now they have yeah. that, but they have the battle Talus, which has been colonized by Vokoblins and they've got yeah, Vokoblins swarming all over it. It's pretty funny. Um, there's the Gleok is like a flying three headed dragon really strong new enemy um well the, gleox have existed before but not in uh breath of the wild yeah yeah so uh, so lots of really good new enemy variety and on top of that there's the gloom versions of all of them in the depths mm-hmm. which is is uh I, I think adds to it and then the the way that you can interact with a lot more of the you, know, you can com- combine objects using another ability we haven't mentioned which is the fusion where you can combine your shield and weapons with objects that you find in the world that really spices up uh the combat with with the enemies yeah. as well because it adds a lot of variety to different kinds of statuses you can use different weird weapons stuff like that yeah there's funny new weapons too where it's like this sword is better when it's wet it's like <laughs> yeah. all right well i didn't know i needed that but that's fun uh they've also added you know some some new simple pleasures one of my favorite things in this game is now uh, you, you'll be out in the, the plains and you may encounter a, a group of, of Bokoblins. In the previous game, there'd maybe be one on a horse, maybe a couple on the horse. This time, now there's a horse pulling a wagon and that mm-hmm. wagon is full of Bokoblins and a simple bomb arrow into the dead center of that wagon creates hilarious chaos as the entire thing explodes and Bokoblins go flying everywhere. And it's just like, you know, I was just trying to go from here to there. I was not looking for anything. And all of a sudden I had one of the funniest, most simply fun things I've had in that game. Uh, All because a bunch of Bokoblins in a wagon is a funny setup and ripe for silly combat. Well, I, that is one of my favorite moments as well. I like those emer- emergent moments in between places. Yeah. Um, 
I, one of the things I really like is running into these big troops of Bokoblins. Instead of just being stuck in their little camps, now sometimes you'll see the boss Bokoblin, which is like a massive it's fat version big. of the book up yeah. yeah um and like followed by a troop of little little buddies kind of walking <laughs> along and they always have um like one of them will be carrying a backpack full of stuff and the, the, those interaction those fights are i feel like just a lot better uh kind of emergent gameplay than you had in the first one. Uh, it, it's I, my favorite is when you catch the guy with the backpack uh, who happens to have a backpack full of bombs. There's almost nothing as satisfying <laughs> as lighting that dude up. I mean, that's been a that's been uh, you know that, that has been a universal truth in video games for a long time. Someone with a an ex, with a a uh, flammable backpack, mm-hmm. whether it's a, a World War One or Two game with flamethrowers, or now a Bokoblin, uh, and uh, with a backpack full of bomb flowers. It's it's fun. lately <laughs> lately my jam has been um, so they still have the weapon durability system, and like in the first game. Uh, if your weapon is about to break, it'll let you know and be flashing red. And uh, like your last hit with that weapon that breaks it, it will deal lots of extra damage. Mm-hmm. I think it's like a multiplier. Um, if you have a weapon that's about to break uh, and you fuse a rocket to it, um, the and then just throw it, <laughs> the explosion from the rocket gets the multiplier oh, and the rocket damn. yeah yes. so you can nice. like those bi- some of those big that. guys you can you can take them out in one hit that way awesome. <laughs> which is super fun and you can just because the rocket kind of moves in a straight line it's it's a nice long range yeah. um drone attack <laughs> it's very very good i didn't know about that that's awesome i love the ability to fuse things to your uh to your bow and arrow which obviously zelda has had like that has existed in versions mm-hmm. of Zelda for a long time. Um, but with this version now where you can fuse every material that you pick up and it will have some degree of impact on the arrow uh, is a ton of fun. They added the like now you can uh, fuse an uh, Aarakocra, not Aarakocra, that's D&D, uh, Aracuda, the the, yeah. the flying guys, Arakis. You can fuse their wings to uh, or their eyeballs to yeah. an arrow, which creates now a homing arrow. Super which, useful. Yeah, incredibly useful. Uh, there, There's a lot of flying enemies in this game and being able to fire homing shots at them yeah. is is satisfying. I like that, especially when you have the um, the keys that have those element uh, like there's a fire keys and an ice keys yeah. and stuff. And when you're fighting stuff that has like an elemental affinity to it, like the um, the Gliok heads will be like elemental. Um, you can hit those with the right, like opposing element, like fire and ice and Pokemon rules. Yeah, Pokemon rules. And, you know, super effective, <laughs> just like Pokemon. <laughs> uh, yeah. So all of that stuff is is really, really great. I, I'm one of my favorite like fusion interactions that I figured out is I was kind of missing uh the cryonis ability which would let you like make uh freeze water in the in the first Mm -hmm. game um they have these like ice fruit that you can if you throw like an ice fruit in the water it will now it'll freeze like a little square in the water or same thing with lava but with the ice if you um if you fuse that block of ice that appears when you freeze the water to your weapon or your shield, both are super useful. Um, if you fuse it to your weapon, it creates a, uh, it gets this like big, like slab of ice on the end of your weapon, which if you slash with the weapon makes a gust of wind. And if you hit somebody with it, it, um, it like freezes them. So nice. That becomes super fun because you can freeze them and then, uh, use the wind to like slide them off of a cliff. <laughs> super That's cool awesome. and then of course uh sticking the ice on your shield uh makes it really good for sliding around um and you know it's pretty easy to get more ice because you just you know use your ice weapon on the water again you get another ch- chunk of ice which lets you very easily walk across the water so another 
alternative to the giant tree bridge. Yeah, yeah. I uh, I think this one got pretty popular on the internet right when the game came out. But uh, you can fuse a mine cart, a full on mm -hmm. mine cart to your <laughs> shield. Yes. And then shield surfing is in this game. But if you have a mine cart attached to your shield, you basically have a little skateboard. So you Sweet. can uh, Tony Hawk yourself just anywhere you want. I totally love all of this stuff. And and it's it's really fun to like discover this stuff yourself. It can be just as fun to see what other people are doing. So you mentioned that Hyrule engineering subreddit. Um, I I really like some of the stuff I've seen on there. People are coming up with weird discoveries all the time, like because there's so many different objects in this game that you can use. Like like a week ago, I saw somebody had figured out that you could um uh, you could snap off a part of a railing in one of the shrines and then you could, because that object happened to have a really low weight, but a really wide, uh, size, like it made for a really good spacer in your flying hover bike, things like that. Like that turns yes. out to be yeah. a lot of ex fun experimentation. The, the, the sort of thing where people doing weird catapult maneuvers in the first game. Like you're going to see cool stuff like that. I, yeah, to emerge. I suspect with the, the height and the depth of this game and the physics mm -hmm. and all these devices, it, it, it's, it's truly an open playground uh, more so than I think. I, I think it, it rivals what we've been able to see people do in like a game like Minecraft you know, mm -hmm. where the, these interlocking systems uh, and I, I, I really appreciate what Nintendo's managed to accomplish. Fucking, you know, Nintendo, they drive you crazy with so much stuff all of the time. And then they put this game out and you're like, all right, well, you did it again. Mm -hmm. It's a classic. It's immediately <sighs> a classic. Yeah, totally, totally love it. I am. I am three. Um of the shrine, not shrines of the, uh, what do you call the temples, big, big temples in. Um, and, uh, I, I hear there's actually five. So yeah, I'm at two and I really, it's so interesting to me. One of the things they've done this time. So the temples in, uh, breath of the wild is the divine beasts still pretty pared down as far as what we think of when we think of a Zelda temple. Uh, and in this one, the temple, the, at least the ones that I've done, the temples themselves, when you actually get to the thing that says like the wind temple or the water temple, it's even more pared down. They're very, very small. But the act of getting to the temple is a whole new thing that I have not felt in a, in a Zelda game. It, we're doing platforming and uh well i really don't want to you know, i know we're we're not this this episode is very timely but i don't want to yeah, spoil we're already things. getting close to an hour but or two, so. but um yeah but just like the effort that you have to go through to get to these temples mm -hmm. i i think is really interesting and and a fun switch from what they did in breath of the wild uh so i've really yeah. been enjoying them my my favorite was the wind temple in terms of getting to it. The yeah, have yeah. you done that one? Yeah, yes, it's, that's an incredible experience of of just yeah. getting up there. It's uh, th they really make use of the height and depth of the world. The whole uh, wind here. temple th that boss fight was awesome mm -hmm. too. That's the best one I've I've best boss I've fought in the game so far for sure. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, mm -hmm. I do have a couple criticisms that i want to throw at this game they're not i'm i'm absolutely loving this game i've kind of already touched on them a little bit one i don't know what the solve for this is but the amount of times i've hit the wrong button on what with what i'm trying to do mm -hmm. is like insane like the every button does like nine different things and it all depends on if you're holding one button versus another one mm -hmm. i don't even know if this is necessarily criticism because obviously there's an, an insane amount of systems here 
but it is constant with the amount of shit they've crammed into the week and or into the into the switch control. I think that, that I'm, I kind of agree with you on this, and I think the fix would be to have better remapping options. The game has very very minimal options for yeah. that. Like, um, and I feel for people that have like any accessibility issue yeah. on this game because I think you can switch like X and A or whatever. Um, I think you can do a little bit of switching of that around and that's it as far as I'm aware. So, yeah, um, it's, it's pretty ridiculous. Uh, secondly, I think I, I, uh, I appreciate that this game really puts an emphasis on draw distance and there is some times in this game where you're like, this is a stunning view, you know, yeah. like what a, what a beautiful game this is. But there's also a lot of times in this game where it's like, oh my God, this was made on hardware that was developed in like 2016. It like do it, be chugging sometimes. It, yeah, and it looks muddy and it's like, mm-hmm. uh, and obviously like there's really no loading. So you're able to just travel this massive world freely, which is incredible, but it just looks kind of gross a lot at least playing which two cannot come fast <laughs> yeah this is more a criticism on their uh like hardware development because the the game they're doing everything they can with it but like especially i felt like down in the depths or in some of the like some of the temples like it just the textures look bad i've been playing a lot of this on handheld i'm sure it looks better on the even on the oled switch which i don't have so I'm playing it on a great big 4K screen. And let me tell you, you can see a lot of these issues real well. Yeah, it uh, it it looks beautiful and horrible at the same time. Uh And then finally. These cut scenes and this localization and the right like again, you said it before and I reiterate it. Zelda is not known for the for the story or for the or any of this. But there's a lot of it in this game. And especially when you're doing the temples, everything is set up with cut scene after cut scene after cut scene. Yeah. And, and they give you the same. This is my biggest issue is they give you the same cut scene every time you unlock one of, or complete one of the things. You <laughs> yeah. get the sages. They give you the exact same spiel again about the war or whatever. And it's like, come on. I've heard this I before. Know. Yeah. I think it's because. It's because you can do them in any order and they want you to mm-hmm. like, you know, you, you you might be hearing it for the first time, but they needed to solve for that somehow because it is excruciating. And all of the little, your little pals are these mm-hmm. like over the top childlike anime characters that you rapidly I learn them about off immediately. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you, they have some sort of inner turmoil that you both learn about immediately. You are overexposed to whatever this little turmoil is, uh, whether it's Sidon and his, and his relationship with his wife or, uh, or the little bird friend and his like, naughtiness and how he's you know coming of age story little bird friend gets a pass from me he's the only one though (laughs) they just it's it's like am i what should i have known any of this am i supposed to care about any of it It, it's it's really bad It, it like i find myself just clicking through cutscenes, and that's not a good feeling in mm-hmm, uh mm-hmm. in any game that said there is one element of the story that's working well for me and that is the um i don't i can't spoil this but as you go around there's these uh geo geoglyphs i think is yeah. the word they use yeah. these like uh images on the ground and as you find them you're unlocking um kind of an out of order puzzle of uh, cut scenes uh, about what happened to Zelda and where she is. That story actually works pretty well for me. There are some yeah. weird issues with it, um, but yeah, but as a story that works pretty pretty darn well. Um, I am I am still story wise mystified by um, what people do and don't seem to remember about all the stuff that happened in the last game. <laughs> Um, yeah. because all of the technology from the, um, the Sheikah is gone. 
Um, they renamed their iPhone um, <laughs> to something yeah. new. Yeah. Uh, the Sheikah Slate is now the Pura Pad. Yeah. Pura uh, Pad. Pe- yeah. Uh, there's a lot of stuff that's like a little incongruous there. Uh, but like I said, it's like, who cares? The story in a Zelda game is mostly like, does he get the sword? <laughs> yes, he does. I know, but which is fine. I, I that's. Have you got you got the sword yet? By the no, way? not yet. No. Okay. Um, that actually that element of it, I found that's maybe the most effective uh, story element that they've done in either of the two games, Breath of the Wild okay. or Tears of the Kingdom. Well, I look forward to that. And and really, my thought is like, yeah, it's a Zelda game. I don't need any of this. I don't need all of my sages to have little like full cut scenes about their relationship with their partner or the, or their feelings towards their moms and their dads. And like, it, it just, it's kind of driving me crazy. And I, I, I yeah. find it, com- it's, if it wasn't so long and so Did much. Did you get uh Minoru yet? I don't think so. No. Okay. I've so done the wind in the you, water, Tim. You've gotten all the ones that are super annoying and none of the ones that are cool. <laughs> Uh, maybe that's it maybe in a in <laughs> six months when i get to the yeah. to the rest of this game i'll i'll feel differently about it but like i don't know and the voice acting is kind of making me laugh i love matt mercer everyone loves matt mercer i love that he does like half of the characters and they all just sound like matt mercer talking <laughs> uh at first i thought it was a mine i thought it was like oh it's gonna be like this character is actually this character because their voices are. And it's like, no, it's just Matt Mercer and he's doing all the voices. Uh, so I, I don't know. Anyway. Yeah. You agreed. know, I, uh, there, I was this, really <laughs> surprised that they had him for Ganon. Like that's like, it's like <laughs> he's like a super recognizable voice actor. And I mean, yeah. yeah like, and and you're going to want like one of the big name voice actors, I guess. But and he's not he, doing an affectation. It just sounds like Matt Mercer. <laughs> I mean, they gave him some real good laughs. I'll, I'll say that. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's fair. Uh, the Zelda voice actor laugh. is like the most exasperated voice. He's just like, like Link the whole I time. Know. She she always yeah. has been. I think when they did her audition, they were like, um, "Can you look? Can can you can you deliver all of your lines sounding?" like super breathy and worried and she's like <laughs> yes i hope <laughs> i hope that i can i'll do the, my best and you get the blood moon like blank the blood moon <laughs> yeah anyway i love the blood moon man i don't know what it yeah. is about the blood moon every time the blood moon happens i'm like yeah blood moon <laughs> it's particularly creepy when it happens and you're in the depths because yeah. like it's already creepy down there, then the then the ground starts getting all oh yeah wiggly and and weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else you want to talk about with this game? Uh, I don't know. I I feel like by the time I beat it, maybe. Um, I I think we've pretty yeah. much covered it. I I'm very still I'm very much still positive on it. And uh, oh yeah, I, absolutely. I am. <laughs> All the stuff I'm saying about the story, remember that the story is like five minutes out of every like I think it's a little hour. bit more than that, but I but I but yes, I agree with you. Like I left all of these criticisms for the end yeah. because they are not my predominant feeling, but I feel like this game has only been heaped with praise and there's been a few things that have like stuck out to me that I wanted to talk about on the on the show. Um but by and large it's i think it's an instant classic and and oh, yeah. is is you know i don't play a lot of long games uh obviously it's like the whole stick of our show and i have had a hard time not just playing this game because it's yeah, awesome it's me. yeah yeah well um reagan has is not playing it and i am make, i hope that listening to this doesn't make him want to because uh he has to spend yeah. all of that time editing <laughs> Laura hasn't played it either, but I know yeah. she she's chomping at it. Uh, yeah. So we'll do, but maybe they'll do their own, uh, you know, Reagan and Laura episode later uh, with the two of them playing it. Um, well, listeners, I would like to know, um, are you playing this game? Um, get any cool tips for us? Any weird stuff that we missed? Uh, it's huge. I'm sure we did. Um, if you have anything you want to tell us, 
We are on every social media known to man except for Instagram because Instagram is not very podcast uh, friendly. How do you show a picture of a podcast? Uh, but you can find us um, and all of our socials at shortgame.fm 